make it a show of hands. Any other farm kids in the room? Oh, a couple. Not too bad. Well, the bonus is I grew up on a farm in Kent County, and I have all of my teeth. But um, as a kid, I, I knew where my food came from thanks to my dad. It's one of the, the joys of growing up on a farm. And so um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about where your ice cream comes from. June happens to be National Dairy Month. It's a time when we celebrate the 8.5 million cows who are here in the United States and who produce about 190 billion gallons of milk every year. And I should mention, there will be boobs in my mouth. Yes! <laughs> the impact of Delaware's dairy industry is important in the state of Delaware, contributing about $73 million to our state's economy. And that's not just dairy farmers, that's also our dairy processors too. People make cheese and ice cream and fluid milk and things like that. This happens to be a uh, dairy farm here in Newark that milks about 100 dairy cows, Holstein cows. This is a pretty typical setup for a dairy farm here in the state of Delaware. And this uh, dairy farm happens to produce its own ice cream. Now, the, the tricky thing is, um, unlike um, most people's uh, mentalities about farms, we are pretty high tech. Um, in the, the dairy industry, baby cows don't come from poles. I mean, technically they do, but it's a long story. I'm not gonna go there. Um, but to make milk, you must have an animal that has um, a baby. So when a, a dairy cow gets pregnant, if she's not milked before, she hangs out, just waiting for her baby calf to be born. But if she's already had a calf, had a calf she's probably already milking, She'll milk for about another six months and take three months off before her baby cow is born. During that time and all throughout their lives, really, um, in, nutrition is very important for dairy cows. Most farmers have lots of acreage where they're growing corn and alfalfa to feed to their animals. Uh, dairy farmers are taking good care of their cows because they want their product to be of excellent quality. Now, once a baby cow is born, it gets a little baby cow bling, a little earring up there so we can tell it from its uh, siblings. It is separated from its mommy, not because we're trying to be mean, but because Baby calves will suck on everything, including each other, and we don't want them to get uh, diseased. Mommy cow goes in to be milked. Uh, dairy cows are milked about two, two times a day, every single day, regardless of the weather. Um, the folks come in and, and milk them. Um, again, I have boobs in my talk. Um, the milk that comes out um, goes into a bulk tank, and that is stored at about 45 degrees Fahrenheit until it's picked up by a milk truck. Um, but the milking equipment kind of gets its own little dishwasher cycle, kind of like you run at home. It's sanitized every time after every milking. Now that milk that comes out of the cows and is stored is picked up by a milk truck a couple times a week. Um, and uh, just like the Postal Service, they come to regardless of the weather. That means farmers, when there's three feet of snow on the ground, have to get out and make room for the milk truck. The milk truck then takes that milk off to a dairy processing facility to be made into, in this case, ice cream. This is a local place nearby to us. Um, at the dairy processing facility to make ice cream, that milk is taken. Sugars, uh, emulsifiers, and stabilizers are added to make a very thick and sweetened base that can then be used to make ice cream. Another important part of that process, once you have your mix, you also need to think about the other ingredients that you're going to add to make your ice cream good. You need to think about whether it's going to be dry ingredients like fruits and nuts and cookies or whether they're going to be uh, liquid ingredients. That mix is then poured into uh, this contraption here called a batch freezer that runs at about 20 something degrees Fahrenheit and it incorporates air uh, into the ice cream while it is freezing. Uh, air is very important in ice cream and the less air you have, the creamier and therefore the better your ice cream is actually going to be. During that time, you can also hand add in some of the ingredients that you want distributed throughout your ice cream. So if you're thinking about cookies and cream, you want little bits of cookies all throughout, you're gonna dump cookies in there. Now after about eight minutes, the ice cream's gonna come out. It's gonna be in about a semi-solid uh, consistency, kind of like soft serve. And that's then ready for packaging into things like pints or quarts, gallons, half gallons, or those great big three and a half gallon containers that you see in your ice cream store. Things that need to be swirled into your ice cream, marshmallow, Marble, chocolate, uh, in a smaller facility are added in by hand, like you can see here, or in a larger facility is, is often automated. Now the key to ice cream is getting it as cold as you can get it, as fast as you can get it once it's made. This is what cuts down on air crystals in the ice cream. Um, we're looking at a negative 30 degrees uh, Fahrenheit that goes into a blast freezer for a couple of hours, and then it's put into another storage freezer where it is kept until it is ready to be served. Now, in a serving cabinet or in your, your typical home freezer, you're looking at about 15 degrees Fahrenheit for perfect ice cream scooping, dipping, and eating consistency here. This is probably the most important uh, time in ice cream making, deciding if you want a milkshake, a cup, a cone, or what have you. Now, uh, something dropped off my slide. 
This is where your self, shameless self-promotion slide goes here. Uh, at the University of Delaware, we are teaching students about where their food comes from, and that includes making ice cream all the way from the cow to the toe.